Residents of Washington, D.C. turned out for a snowball fight earlier this week, a sign of normalcy in a winter marked by soaring COVID-19 cases in the United States yet again. Fueled by the Omicron variant, on Monday, the nation's coronavirus cases reached a world record of 1 million detected in 24 hours, according to a report by the Johns Hopkins University. Today, I'm directing my team to work with Pfizer to double our order from 10 million to 20 million treatment courses to be delivered in the months ahead. On Tuesday, President Joe Biden outlined his administration strategy to address Omicron. In addition to buying more Pfizer COVID-19 pills, he promised to make booster shots and testing more widely available. With Americans having to wait in long lines to get tested, Biden has been blamed for delays and shortages. His administration has not given details on the distribution of the promised half a billion free at-home test kits. Testing is considered key to limit Omicron spread and reduce hospitalization. We can't do very much about inhibiting the spread of this extraordinarily contagious virus. And if it only produces mild disease, we could, if you will, quote, tolerate that while we try to continue to prevent these hospitalizations. More evidence is emerging that Omicron causes milder symptoms than previous variants, in some places resulting in lower death rates despite soaring case numbers. We are seeing more and more studies pointing out that Omicron is infecting the upper part of the body. Unlike other ones, the lung who has been causing severe pneumonia, it can be a good news but we really require more studies to prove that. The U.S. has donated more than 315 million vaccine doses globally while pledging a total of 1.2 billion doses. Yet some health experts say wealthy nations are not doing enough to vaccinate the world and prevent the emergence of new variants. Until we uh, redouble our commitment to vaccinate the African continent, Southeast Asia and Latin America, we're always going to have this problem. And that's what has to be prioritized. And so far, neither the U.S. government or the G7 countries have really made that commitment. On Monday, U.S. health authorities approved Pfizer's booster shot for children as young as 12, with a final approval expected in the coming days. Pat Suida Kuswara, VOA News.